center for creating new life, which is my favorite my phone is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I, my portion of the update is will be brief. Uh, we have a little bit uh, more from our text around the schematic design, which is uh, a considerable uh, body of work. Uh, but I want to start off by saying I think we have some celebratory news. Uh, I notified the board directly as soon as I got the news that this is the first time to state anything in public. Um, so this project, the uh, capital campaign for the Center of Community Life, has uh, finally received uh, a uh, capital grant from the Buck Family Fund. Uh, a little shy of what we asked for, instead of $4 million, it came in at $3.85 million. Um, but counting the 200000 they've given previously, we're actually over the $4 million mark from them. So we're in the ballpark of $4 million from NCF slash the Buck Family Fund. Uh, as I understand it, this is the largest single grant they've ever given, period. Uh, so this is something to celebrate indeed. Uh, combined with the previous fundraising, this project's crossed the $7 million mark. Uh, so that's a pretty big milestone in approaching a third of the overall target for, uh, for our capital campaign. Um, I also know that when we do these monthly updates, Sometimes it can feel like we're not making progress. We're just, I'm just reporting on what happened in the last month. And some months are slower than others. Some months we have progress. Some months we have lively debate. Uh, so I wanted to take this milestone as an opportunity to reflect on some of the progress that we've made. Um, and I'm sorry, I can this out so you can see my notes here. But, um, and uh, I, it's just crib month notes that should be easy to follow if anybody wants a copy. We can make copies and we'll post it on the website. Um, so very early in this project, a, f a commissioned feasibility uh, fundraising <coughs> study, fundraising feasibility study was done. And it was actually uh, around the idea of a gym. And the study came back saying we could raise about $5 million. Shortly after that, a steering committee was formed to help champion the project, another big milestone. And the project vision was expanded over many months and quarters to be roughly the project we have today. Um, and the capital campaign target was incrementally raised to the $24 million uh, current target. Um, the master plan was commissioned uh, in this cycle uh, in, in 2014. There were previous iterations. Uh, and it was adopted by the board but not submitted to the county. Um, Early last year, when there were community concerns around that master plan, the board asked that we redo it in consideration particularly of this building. And that work was completed um, in uh, January, and the plan was submitted to the county, which is currently undergoing its approval process. So that was a big milestone for this project, in that we have a vision for the entire campus um, that roughly matches our funding pipeline. And uh, particularly in this last iteration, there was a lot of community outreach through events, the Community Action Committee, et cetera. Much of that was later in the details of the schematic design, but in terms of the Community Action Advisory Committee, there was a lot of town halls and other meetings getting input into the master plan. Um, a pro forma operating budget, a real rough one, was developed about a year ago. That was to support our fundraising. I'll get back to that later in terms of next steps. And um, as I mentioned, the Community Advisory Committee was formed. It met five, about five times. Um, there was also extensive community outreach done beyond the Community Advisory Committee. Uh, we had one of the best survey turnouts that uh, we've seen for in the city, uh, and a number of town halls and other community outreach events. Uh, the schematic design, which you're going to see uh, tonight, uh, was commissioned uh, to match our project budget. So the master plan is bigger than the current project budget. It's more of a vision for the entire campus. We wanted to get uh, to work on a schematic design. And as you'll see, there's a, a large amount of effort and body of work that went into that, driven by advice from the community advisory committee. Um, on the fundraising, going way back, we secured $1.25 million from the RBA. Um, and so that was kind of some of the base funding for this project. There was another 400,000 uh, and you know plus that came from a combination of the county, Marine Community Foundation, 
and Community Development Corporation and some other <coughs> small sources. So these are pretty big milestones. Um, there was a HRPP grant of another 750,000 and change that was also secured. And that grant is set to expire at the end of this month. Another big piece of news, I've been keeping you apprised, but it's official now. All of our reimbursement and advance requests have been approved at the state level. <laughs> big, big milestone. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, cash flow is now local at the county. And uh, I was hoping this week, but it looks like next week, uh, we are going to get the actual money into our custody and be able to start paying bills. Um, uh, over the course of... Excuse me, just, I just have a quick question. Start paying bills, um, 750000 How much are bills? Uh, I, I don't have that on the top of my head uh, in terms of the outstanding balance, but it's north of 300000 uh, in terms of the outstanding bills. I'll give you a full... What can we do? With, with, the, with the money once we got back, once we got it, is it all going, you know? Yeah. It had already been explained that, and that I thought the whole entire 750,000 had been expended. Not, not to date. Um, there are some additional bills we'd expect in the future. And uh, you know, this, this starts to get into a broader kind of how does the money flow, which I did a couple of presentations on. And I'm going to do another one next month. Um, coming into the next and, and because we like, talked about maybe doing the uh, senior center on, on the overall budget, nothing has changed. Yeah, on the overall budget, nothing has changed since my last several presentations. We still have the roughly 2.4 million available in different pots. Uh, 1.4 is unencumbered. What was where was the the renovation of the kitchen? What pot? Well, this is for you to decide. So, in the next meeting, and as you'll see, we, when I, we had talked about it. I thought it was coming from the seven hundred mm -hmm. thousand as the reimbursement. Mm -hmm. What? What? It, where was it coming from? Two million. So, yeah. So, the specific board action on that step has not been taken. There has been discussion around it, and uh, what you know, just let me complete this. I'll talk about next steps. We should address that. So, um, in addition to that reimbursement that has all been approved now, so that, that is positive, we have the TAM OBAC grant of a million dollars, and now the 3.85 million buck family fund grant and crossing the seven million milestone. So, when you look at this in its entirety, although it sometimes feels like it's moving slow, this project has actually gotten a very long way. Almost a third of our fundraising, a lot of the entitlement work, a lot of community outreach, and you know, while it's had transitions in staff and bumps on the road, I think we have a lot to celebrate. <laughs> so in terms of next steps, and, and we'll get to uh, Director McNamara's question as part of this, um, you know, it's been discussed that we really, to execute on our fundraising pipeline, we needed um, a, a lead funder and, and a letter of commitment from something like the Buck Family Fund. So we need to now leverage that in our fundraising. Um, uh, of course, as a matter of normal cycles, I need to bring before you next fiscal year's operating budget. I'll do that in the next meeting. Uh, that should address a lot of your questions around where is money custody, what are we going to put to use in this upcoming fiscal year. And hand in hand with that, it may not be at that same meeting, but shortly thereafter, the board can be presented with options and recommendations on sequencing and phasing and steps. And it could be as small as let's do a kitchen, or it could be a large phase, and we'll come to you with options. Part of what David's going to talk about is their team and their subcontractors are busy doing uh, revised cost estimation work based on the details in the schematic design. So we had some early cost estimates. They're now able to refine them. And uh, that meeting is being scheduled, I believe, for next week. So um, you, you'll have uh, uh, enough details to start making decisions on when and where to spend money. Uh, we also really sh should consider uh, how we want to move forward with communications and community engagement. Uh, there's certainly a lot of next steps needed there. 
uh, and something that's been put on the back burner for a while, but will need to be um, revisited as we're getting closer and further in this project, is our programming model and pro forma operating budget, which I mentioned earlier. We had a real high level draft one developed a year ago. Uh, in order to, as a couple of directors heard when we met with the uh, uh, Buck Family Fund representatives today, in order to actually get the money that's been awarded dispersed to us, um, we have the same set of requirements that they've given their other capital projects. We were in a competitive process and we were one of seven chosen. Um, one of those requirements is that we show them a sustainable operating plan. Um, and ours is too high level toolable, so we're going to have to get into synchronizing that with whatever phasing and sequencing and saying these are the programs, this is the budget, here's how we can sustain it. Um, so I think uh, Monique and other staff um, and other partners uh, should be collaborating in, um, in that as part of our next steps. So that's just kind of high level. I wanted to leave a lot of time for this big body of work. Um, but before we go into that, uh, any questions? I just want to I think when you talk about um, programs, it seems to me that there are two side by side work that should be done, and that this body over here, or this group, is working on a program and budget for the program, and this group over here working on fundraising mm -hmm. and it should be happening at the same time yes and then that will <coughs> partially satisfy some of uh, our commitment to the book that we foundation right so when you talk about staff then it would seem to be the most resource that you need to get your partners together uh, <coughs> your program partners together and then the other thing is that then, then we need to go back to where we were around uh, reassembling the fundraising team and, and everybody working on the same time with get this done, let's move forward. So, well, well, what I was going to say, there also as part of one of the requests is uh, communications and so uh, you know I, I was thinking that we need to do some kind of community newsletter or some kind of uh, create some kind of vehicle to keep community people in, informed as to what we're doing where we are and what still needs to be done so uh, you know, and, and, and that would also satisfy one of the requests from the uh, Buck Foundation, but it also, I think, will help people to, uh, you know, kind of be on board, you know, then they have an opportunity to know what they want to participate in doing, you know, do they want to participate in programs or do they want to participate in fundraising or do, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I think that that will not only just meet the uh, requirements of the different organizations <coughs> that receive the funding from the Buck Foundation, because we all have to do the same thing, but for this community, it will give people an opportunity to be engaged, and it will also keep them informed as to where we are in the project. Okay, as it relates to um, what I took out of the meeting today is with the foundation having a strong, challenging, a challenge letter that will go out, that will that we will have in hand that and then mm -hmm. we'll have access to their 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 was the donor advice, the advice donor list. Yeah, two different things but related. Uh, but in terms of seeking really aggressively uh, seeking the, the, those funds. Then, um, as it relates, and then they talk about the budget, um, cost estimates that we have to revisit, but also um, as, it, 
as it relates to the uh, well, work on the program model and the performa uh, budget, that going also like uh, Nancy said, hand in hand, but then it's also just really an opportunity. Um, I was there to listen to hear two, four words, and I didn't hear those words. And those were new market tax pay. No, okay. no, uh, no, I'm just letting the public know. <laughs> they, didn't say that. Right. they did not mention mm -hmm. as a condition at all right. new market tax credit. So that within itself is a victory uh, for the for the people in terms of that really advocated strongly against that avenue of, of uh, of funds, but we have this possibility of really their list and whoever else list in terms of raising raising that additional whatever was going to be gotten. And but I do know that now is not the time anyway. We passed the time of the new market tax credit, but that is not a condition for us to be able to do that money. I just have to say too. I have to be said it a known condition from the foundation. That was what the people kind of envisioned or assumed because the the question of new market cash spread and, and for me it was just like uh, here's a pot of money over here that could be available. It, it was never really a part of the condition for anything like that. Yeah so if I could clarify if I could clarify a bit um, when we first approached when we first approached Buck Family Fund, um, we shared with them the fundraising pipeline, which did include new market tax credits. Uh, about this time last year, perhaps even earlier, uh, there was some dialogue that referenced new market tax credits. Um, and it, I believe it was referenced because we had it in our pipeline. So, um, you know, I think several community members have since spoken with um, the Buck Family Fund and some representatives as has the project team. And it's been clarified for quite some time that it's, that's not the requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, and as was articulated today, and I'll just share it for, for public record, um, the requirement is that this, this grant of nearly $4 million was given in context of a $24 million project. How we go about securing the rest of the $24 million is up to the project. Whether we use new market tax credits or another vehicle, that's the context of the grant. It happens to be about one-sixth of the overall project budget. There was some discussion um, around what if the project is smaller, that whether we pass on new market tax credits or for whatever other reason <coughs> may end up raising less. And um, this grant will likely be indexed. So if we do a $12 million project instead of a $24 million project, we'd probably get half of the money, but it would be a discussion, it's not a formal one. So we have an opportunity to continue to discuss with them what's going on with their fundraising, what's going on with the scope of the project, and based on that, they reserve the right to adjust accordingly. Um, so New Market Tax Credits is one of the pieces of fundraising, it would technically have to be the last piece, and, and technically I think in the next cycle, which is I think what we're referencing on timing. Uh, so that's, that's a way down the road decision. We have a lot of other fundraising to do, including um, shop this on the donor buy side of NCF, as well as the rest of our existing pipeline, um, many of which were saying, where's NCF? Now we have an answer. Um, and as Director McNamara pointed out, uh, they are going to draft the language of the letter, and before finalizing it, give us the opportunity to read it, give input, and make sure it's worded in a way it can be a successful fundraising tool, almost a challenge type grant. So it's not just here's our form letter, do with it what you will. They really want us to be successful in the rest of our fundraising. Um, other conditions where we need to get our entitlements done uh, and the scope, uh, both in budget as well as in programs, uh, need to match how we currently position the project. Specifically, the, this amount of funding is so large because it so well matches their four strategic areas environment health education and economic opportunity 
if for some reason we start to shrink down in our scope in, of even programs and we no longer align to their strategic initiatives, they'll reserve the right to revisit this as well. Uh, this is the same kind of conditions they're giving to all seven of the capital campaigns that they funded. If you change the scope of the project, shrink the project, don't get your entitlements, you may not get all the money. So we're not going to treat it differently. Another question uh, or concern is we not having to raise the whole $24 million at one time. Yes, we can phase And that if we phase, we able to phase it in. So when you phase it in, the analogy was $8 million. So if we raise the $8 million, then they can give one, what, 1.1 1 .1 million or whatever. A million change. <laughs> yeah, and to match that. That's, that's how that is. But, but this is what's going to happen. If the rent is going to put on their fundraising hat, then we are all going to go to work, and if we don't give the money, and we ain't really got to consider uh, not getting it off. No. Okay. Here, you yeah. have I'm glad to hear that uh, Nancy, when you were talking about uh, the different committees, the fundraising committees, that you're actually opening it up. And several of us in the community have desired to sit on the fundraising committee. And uh, so I'm glad to really hear that that's now an open process. Um, the other thing I know you're talking about conditions, and I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad to hear that there's going to be a letter, because I definitely want to as a resident, make sure that the stipulations that are conditions are clearly outlined. And I know you're saying that uh, the new market tax credits no longer, is no longer an issue, and hopefully we put that to rest that we're not going to do that. I know you keep saying further down the line. I right. think we need to go ahead and deal with this issue and deal with it now. Be it um, a, as you talked about, Norman, do we put it to a vote? Um, uh, the community or whatever, but we need to put that that one to a rest. Uh, the other thing uh, it had to do with I have a I need some clarity around the sustainable operating budget that you talked about. I'm not very I'm not clear on what you meant in terms of what they meant actually. Uh, they're looking at the expanded campus and an idea of expanded programs um, would require a different budget than the CSD operates on today. Um, you know, it would probably require more staff, different maintenance costs. You know, it would change the CSD as we change this campus. So they want to see that we've done the work to understand what that would look like financially. How would we staff the programs? How would we maintain the buildings? How would we maintain the landscape, the road? Etc. Uh, what would we do direct versus with partners? Much as we do today, but it would evolve. Um, and so we did a very high level version of this a year ago um, as part of the early request for the grant, but it was a, a high level model. Once we get closer to breaking ground, that's not going to be good enough. They want a detailed five year pro forma, uh, which we will have to put together, and that needs to be done in collaboration with the people we can uh, operate that budget. And not, yeah. not only that, excuse me, Mr. but not only that, um, from what that high level was before, he didn't say what was before. He just said to, so I see it as an opportunity for us to really, again, do for self. If we really aggressively are raising that money, he wants to know how is it going to be funded, staffing, program, blah, blah, for five years, real cash. So we can do that. We can do that without, before you were depending on various organizations contracting out for them to run our facilities and do the various things with their money. We were not. It, we, we did collaborate with organizations that have experience with larger programs, larger facilities, right. but no dependency on that. It was just a high-level model of what, what a budget could look like. Right, but they were running the budget. No. They weren't? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just a model. It, it didn't assume anybody in any role. It was just assuming greater scope of well, that's programs. That's good to hear that. Yeah, it was just a model. Nor are we bound to the old model. 
um, right. we could totally change it as long as it's sustainable and supports the programs that we want to run. That's what we're looking for. Five years. Yes. That's really nice. so, yeah. The other part of my question, um, Nancy, has to do with uh, I wanted to know if the CSB was the one to follow the priorities that was um, voted on by the survey, that the community survey that you all sent out. Are we going to follow those priorities in terms of our build out? You know, when you all decided to do this survey, you have to understand you can't be setting the community up. You can't say to me, see, you laugh, this is not funny. It's not funny, and even if you say, yes, maybe the swimming pool was number one, I don't know, it might have been one or two. That's why you have a fundraising committee. There are several of us that's willing to get on that, and that might be very well, that might very well be a possibility that we in fact can get enough money to do that. So, you know, I just want to say to you, you all as board, if you put a survey out there to us, to the residents, and say that we actually have some say, you know, we have some voice in terms of what should be built in the uh, first priority, first, second, third, or whatever, stick to your word. Stick, I just want to say to you, stick to your word, then you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have so much backlash from folks in the community. <laughs> stick to your word. And it's not a joke. People, I'm sorry, people for over 50 years have been wanting to swim the pool. Every community you go to, they have several. Why is it that our children go to town and they can't swim and they wind up failing those courses? That adds to them not being able to graduate from high school. When we look at it, it's more than a swimming pool. It's all about the health of folks in the community. The adults as well as the seniors, the children alike. It's physical activity. So I, I, I'm really a little bit offended with the laugh. I'm, I'm having a hard time with that. I, I, I I'm just having a hard time with that. As far as the, the swimming pool before you have buildings and stuff, it's like, um, you know, you, you got to have a building, locker rooms, and all of the above, you know, to facilitate the swimming pool. Right. I the swimming pool is very, very, very expensive to maintain. And right. I understand all of that. I'm part of the development. I understand all of that. Right. All that. Right. So all I'm, all I'm saying is, you know, stick to your word. We talked about the gymnasium, we talked about the uh, teen center, the boxing fitness. Are you going to follow the priority that was outlined that people voted on? That's the question that I have for you all. And I also want to add, too, uh, was it last week, got an opportunity to go up to whole, uh, Homestead. Homestead just opened up in Homestead Valley, just opened up a brand new community pool. So, I mean, all the little nicks and, and crannies in, in Marin County, they're coming up with swimming pools for themselves, and uh, why not for us? Not and, I mean, you know, that really, I mean, or, or say, because I believe swimming pool is number one. Not number it's one. Exactly. one. Oh, well, change center. But you can easily say this is going to be in this phase, and so or the next phase, or or, or whatever, not at the bottom of the list. Nor the other two, and that was one of the quick concerns. Is however we decide to phase it in, and the question from Terry is: Are we going to listen to what the community said? That was the survey that the architect put out wanted to make sure everybody had a say even if they weren't a resident uh, of what the future should look like so so if i could uh, jump in so it was uh, uh the Sari, you were one of the greatest advocates to make sure we had the full question put into the survey yeah. 
And when we went and updated the master plan, we went from a vision that might have been around a $24 million scope or so to something that grew to over $45 million scope. And we put all of the range of options on there. And then it was the issue of getting the survey and we saw where things ranked, teams number one, who was second or third. Uh, we wanted to see what were people's interest in early childhood, what was their interest in the health clinic as well, uh, where did senior center fit in that. And so we looked at all of those and it would be great to say if there was an opportunity to raise $45 million, it's all phase one. And so then we brought it to the board at the early part of this year and it was the board voted, I believe unanimously or certainly a strong majority, that said, hey, for the $24 million anticipated pipeline, what will be the aspects we'll get into it? And it included, what I'll be presenting shortly, but we've been working for the entitlements and the master plan and all the, the, the work that will be shown today is all pool ready because we're making sure that the vision of the pool is there and the way to build the pool is, a, is not going to be uh, blocked in any way. So I to, what can we do for the first 24 million? So the pool was a second phase on that. And so that's where uh, we stand at the moment. The, the, the community, and I'm on, my, one of my questions has to do with the Marissa Health and Wellness Center as well as the Early Childhood Clinic. They were way down on the list. In our first priority, are they as part of the first priority of funding that the CSD is going to be um, seeking or getting? Are they way up there? Because the CSD, you all have certain requirements that come under your purview. And the clinic and early childhood is not in it. That they should be priority number two. That's part of the, that's part of the um, unrest that's happening here in the community. Let me try to help you a little bit. Um, I don't know if, uh, Terry, you missed the meeting or not, but the scope of what the schematic design was uh, commissioned for was informed by not only the survey, but the community advisory committee recommendations, um, which bumped some things up in priority, like the senior center, <coughs> which scored relatively low on the survey, um, and moved some things down, like the pool. Um, but that was really just a recommendation at this stage for what to get to another level of design. The actual recommendation or final decision really on what will be built, you know, take the next step in design, uh, complete entitlements, and what will be built when has yet to be made. And this board needs to make those decisions. Um, it's currently got the most work done on this scope, which we're going to get a walkthrough of. But things can change. Um, when we make changes, it uh, affects uh, where we stand with funders. So when we change scope, um, that's where we have to basically resell it to funders. They may not change their funding model, um, but they so far have reserved the right to do that in some cases. And I expect we're going to get some more of that going forward, not just from the Buck Family Fund. So we did not get into a discussion today of if we prioritize the pool, would you change your funding level? Um, so I have no idea how they would react to that. Um, it's probably more about overall impact than any specific item. Um, but those decisions of what are we building when are still to be made um, and still to be informed by detailed cost models. Uh, hopefully build largely on this work, but there's opportunity for change before we put a shovel in the ground. Can I follow up on, on Terry and say that and usually in a design review process, the size development plan, which I see, you have a schematic design slash the size development plan, there is a design review process as a process that happens at the, uh, at the chambers, it's, uh, and, and we will be able to have that process going forward for the precise development plan. Absolutely. I, I think it's even required, isn't it? It's yeah. required. It's, okay, so I just want to be certain that we will have a chance for the record, um, uh, to to share all of this um, uh, after you've given your presentation and, and everybody understands where you're at, and we, we do get uh, a chance to respond. Thank you. There is a rather large growing body of concerned citizens of Marin City. Folks are paying attention to this model. They're paying attention to whether or not your word is true. And I know what David is getting ready to present, you know. And it's going to cause a lot of conflict. I'm sorry, but that's what we, you know, that's what's happening. And I'm just hoping that at some point 
you all be true to your word. That's that's, that's where I'm. That's where I'm at. Are there any other comments? Yeah, I, I got a couple of things I would like to ask, and uh, uh, depends on what the answers are. Now, this uh, project is going to be solar equipped. Solar ready at the moment, and so. Well, you know, there are a lot of companies out here who would like to green Marin City, you know, through solar panel and whatnot, and they would probably make excellent partners. And I would definitely drop that into your uh, 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 fundraising portfolio. Now, according to the last iteration, is the health center going to be part of the, the build-out, the initial build-out? So as uh, Josh just said, the direction of the board uh, was for the first phase of schematic design uh, included uh, the six buildings uh, here, senior center, uh, reduce the Manzanita building, new gym and uh, uh, recreation building, Harriet Tubman, house, early childhood and health clinic. All of those are included in phase okay. one vision. You do know, and I mentioned this before, you do know that the, the, the health staff State level has you know health facilities, grants, and things like that. There's, there's an organization up there to deal with that, which leads me into the thing I announced earlier that we're trying to reconvene the council of uh, agencies, who the state is sending down their lead, leading consultants, you know, to see how this community is working, what uh, what kind of service or what kind of support they can give the service. You know, it looks like a lot of things are coming together. Now, one of the things that they do, and I think, Josh, you mentioned four different categories that the foundation imposed upon us, uh, uh, environment, health, and... So they're not imposed upon us. Those are just their strategic uh, initiatives at the family fund level, and we happen to be able to speak to all four. The same thing at the state level. It's the exact, the exact same thing, and the same thing that we, you know, you come to the conference. Agency and that's the thing that we could probably generate. We made policy support, you know, from the different agencies and community to help. Uh, where is CRA? Is it factored in in our fundraising portfolio? Help me with my acronym, CRA. Huh? I forgot what CRA is. Community Reinvestment Bank. Uh, I remember you mentioned that before. It wasn't, I believe, on the uh, existing pipeline. I did have it in the notes from a previous oh, okay. time. Okay, well, we need to talk to Union Bank, you know, about that, and we need to look at California One Bank, who is doing a lot of investing in communities like this and whatnot. Um, fire the newspaper. We used to do the newspaper, you know, we stopped in 2008. And it was an excellent vehicle, you know, to get communications out because it went to every postal drop in the area, including the boat holes and everything like that. And it had resource directories, referral directories, and it had voices to people. You know, we had, you know, we interview people and get their voices. And this, they need to have, you know, that public expression, you know, a, a vehicle to allow them to have, allow that to happen.
the Harriet Tubman House. What that is that? That's the building near Rocky Grand Park. Yep. Yeah. Um, an early childhood education facility instead of the portables, and a health and wellness uh, health clinic facility instead of its uh, current state. And what's this? What am I forgetting? Yeah, oh, the site work. The site work. The, the roadway and other site work. So that's where they've taken just to the next step in the entitlement process. If the board will be making a series of decisions uh, to decide, do they stick with this scope? Do they reduce it down as a first step? Do they make any changes to it? Okay. And so I just want to be clear um, because I found it alarming that talking about the, um, the new market tax credit program. And so the letting go of the buildings and control by CSB to the outside agency. So we're not looking at that anymore, right? I mean, I understand that you said down the line that may research, but with what you about what you've spoken tonight, that all is under the purview of the um, CSB board, right? Yes, the decision to pursue any source of money will be with the approval of the CSB board. Uh, new market tax credits, there are some outstanding questions around it. I know some people don't want to talk about it at all and rule it out immediately. Um, but there have been requests from the board, um, not only with staff attorneys and consultants to kind of get to the bottom of some outstanding questions, but then to go through a community um, engagement process around it so people really understand what it is. Um, that work is not on our critical path right now. Uh, we have been in the background scheduling meetings among the attorneys and consultants, and um, they will eventually bring something back to the community and the board. Um, but that's, that's not, uh, not a decision that's related to the Buck Family Fund grant or anything we need to do tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay. I just, have I, I just want to say that I did have a, a very lengthy discussion with Josh, and we've, and we've been talking about getting in, it actually, just what you're talking about, Nancy, and I think others on the board have mentioned we need to put up that, that uh, um, the community, um, measure of how much money we have so we can show the community where we're at. Remember we're talking about that fundraising piece for the community and so when we get the fundraising committee together as I recommended to Josh that we really look at the whole ability of the county to find a really good fund, uh, somebody a professional fundraiser and then all the way down to the community wanting to do whatever, the, you know, whatever fundraising they can do to help become a stakeholder in the process. But, but I don't know if we can find somebody, and we've talked about it. Josh says he's not a professional fundraiser, but I think that's something we need to, 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 to find for this uh, next phase. It's, and there are several people who have done some really good fundraising for in the county. We don't need to bring somebody from outside the county. I can give you some suggestions. Okay. I, this is into this uh, schematic design in the middle. And I, you know, you I'm looking at on page six where you have the showers, men, women, restroom, etc. Why would it be on that side of the building versus the side closer to where a swimming pool would be? So if I could, I think that might be the segue since you're looking at the handouts. There are handouts uh, for uh, anyone in the uh, community at the table there as well. And, Madam Chair, I'll just right. start and I'll try to answer that uh, question and any other questions that I say go. Is that okay? Yeah. Do it that way. Okay. So what we want to do in the chair's ask that uh, we have a, we're at the point of a schematic design submissions. We have, I haven't counted them, but it's probably at least 50 drawings. Uh, and these are half size when we submit them to the county. They are uh, full size, which is four times the area of this. And uh, the uh, eight and a half by 11 documentation here, which is in the 100 plus pages. I can go on, with, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours have gone into preparing this, and I'd be happy to talk all night about all of these things. I'll keep my presentation short and then answer questions from the board and uh, community for your, your wishes. Just on uh, a sort of segue on this, that this, uh, it takes a long time to build uh, a community center project. The first big public project I did, my wife was pregnant with my uh, uh, first child, and she was five at the opening. And so that can be, and I know uh, many of you have been working
working on this project and envisioning it for decades already. And so it seems uh, so on. But just this process, schematic design in the, from beginning of design to end of design, not even construction, the schematic design is the 30% standpoint. We're about a third way through this scope of work. When, where you have the chance, as Josh said, to uh, adjust it, see which parts are going to go forward, uh, and then you have construction after that. We're talking about 2020, approximately, is the time frame to get uh, these uh, facilities online. Um, we have heard, and we very much heard, and part of my the direction given to me by the board and uh, reinforced by uh, staff, is that we want to see early progress on the senior center. So in all of our scenarios that we're planning is looking how to uh, make that the first thing in the pipeline. Uh, to come forward, so that's the, uh, the preview of it. Just to quickly clarify, and then uh, anyone just interrupt if there's something goes super, super high level, if there's anything you want to know about it. But as Josh had mentioned, uh, one of the uh, main aspects of this is the site. We're dealing with the entire campus, all the way from Rocky Grant Park, all the way uh, to Phillips Drive, including the other side of Phillips Drive, so we can uh, improve it with our uh, school and uh, Cornerstone Church uh, neighbors. So we have a lot of work there. As we talk about and really appreciate the uh, comments that have uh, come from the community about making a sustainable project, uh, having a sustainable stormwater strategy that deals with all the uh, natural rain water and its treatment is a fundamental part of this. So there's a lot of civil engineering uh, that's uh, uh, intrinsic in this and how the uh, rainwater comes off the roof and comes down the hillsides and how it gets treated on the surface through natural means and underground pipes and the tension systems. It's all a uh, very big part uh, of this. We have very talented engineers for it. So we have, we are blessed with a robust and topographic, a, a lot of uh, hills uh, here. And we're using them to the maximum advantage to let things flow, but to make sure that we have everything that's EVA accessible. So people would, uh, uh, we're not, we don't talk about uh, able-bodied and disabled. We talk about, I'm temporarily able-bodied on the tab. I'll be needing these uh, accessibility features just as much as anyone else will at uh, some point in my life. And so we have all the different site sections looking how to make everything uh, completely uh, accessible as well. And so uh, all the different aspects of there and have to go over these in detail. We had shown what the illustrations were, now going to the main recreation building. So this is what's been driving this project. Number one, uh, uh, I think uh, we've heard over and over again is getting a new gym and additional recreation spaces here. This includes the relocation of the uh, boxing and fitness spaces, new dance room, new team uh, space, new team multi-purpose classroom and art room uh, is uh, part of this uh, uh, project. It shows how we detail what it looks like from Phillips Drive and from the side. Uh, this is uh, the top images seeing the building from uh, uh, coming towards this direction, towards this building from Marriott Tubman House. Uh, with the two-story wing on the left and the high volume of the, uh, the gym. Uh, the gym uh, with, as you see in the drawings, with three cross courts uh, in them as well. Uh, part of this uh, includes uh, designs for kitchens uh, as well. Uh, for it. We get into all the details and there's a narrative of what it is, what we to do this design work from your direction. We met with every single staff member uh, here and uh, Monique and Howard and others and we got everybody's uh, statement of uh, needs, desires, and wishes, and we uh, what we do is we start and put them in here. Uh, and we brought at one of my previous meetings. I said, "Oh, we know this is going to in my doing public process. Everything always starts to creep and scope creep. Budgets go up uh, and the rest." So I said, "Do we want to start tightening our belts yet?" And the direction from the board was not yet. Let's see what it's going to cost. And as Josh mentioned, we're going to calculate that. So all this shows and on the drawings and the printed. Uh, 800 by 11 documents are what we've heard and what would make a really wonderful uh, uh, conference. And so uh, these show the plans on slide, uh, uh, slide 12, shows the uh, first floor and then the second floor, all the spaces I mentioned in the uh, gym with the three cross courts. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, adjust, and uh, Roy, so I'll come to your question uh, here too. So we have, uh, in this slide, we have the restrooms. We size the restrooms now for the gym. When you build a pool, you'll need to practically double those again. So we have left space uh, adjacent to the pool for the pool uh, restrooms as well. And so uh, 
and say that again. So when you build the pool, you're going to have to double the size of your restrooms mm -hmm. and increase the shower. So there's room to the east of this uh, uh, to put the on, new, side. on that side. So you'll build it then because you don't. If you you could say, hey, let's not build the team classroom yet and build the future restrooms now. And I think that would be getting the cart in front of the horse. So you, you build the, the pieces together and coordinate the stuff. So uh, we're trying to be very uh, efficient on that. Um, Can I make a comment, please. I, I've, throughout this process, really been um, driving this team crazy by challenging them to say, you know, what if we're not working with 24 million? What if we're working with less? What if we want to phase this piece first and that piece later or switch it around? And driving them nuts with these what if scenarios. Um, part of those what if scenarios could be, you know, what if a pool was a, a, a number one priority and, you know, how, how would you move things around? So they have to work with some constraints, and they work with the constraints that, that you gave them. Um, but it doesn't mean there hasn't been dialogue around how could this change. In fact, there's been probably more dialogue than they cared for. <laughs> so um, a lot of those decisions can be made. What he's presenting is just the direction that's been given. Right. And as we, uh, one of the aspects that came up, so uh, Ms. Terry, when we had submitted in the end of last year the first master plan, uh, and we had it approved and it was submitted to the county, the vision didn't have uh, both the new gym and a separate community hall. And so we came back and we added that community hall uh, into it. And as part of that, uh, in the process of going through these different changes and what if scenarios, uh, we were also, okay, well, we don't have the money in the $24 million phase one to rebuild the new community hall but through uh, lots of community input, and remember at MLK uh, uh, birthday celebration, people said, well, why not? We have to make sure we can keep the existing Manzita gym open while we build a new one. And then we realized, well, crap, let's keep it open until we rebuild it, and we don't have to take it down. So we had this bonus of having the whole existing gym being able to serve as the dedicated community hall and right beside the new gym when you're open. So that was one of these great pieces. The segue to that is as we sort of realizing, okay, these things have changed from the master plan, we had the kitchen that was served the new facility. We had it dead, it was behind the gym because that was the only community hall we had in the January, in the December master plan. Uh, then we realized we're going to keep the community hall. Well, the gym should be closer to and serve really the community hall first. Like maybe you'll have the kitchen should serve the community hall. Uh, first, and so we took the gym that uh, had been shown in some of the earlier drawings. You may remember behind the gym and slid it sideways, and actually it's now kissing the existing Manzanita Center with a firewall between it. But you can use it when you build this gym. You'll be able to use it to serve the current uh, Manzanita uh, community hall and the future one as well. So these are some of the, the flexibilities that we're busy juggling as we say, well, if something comes first, and other pieces we see no opportunities. And we take advantage of them to position you for the maximum uh, success for it. So then, as part of this work too, uh, we the strategy for phase one was touching gently the Manzanita Center. Once we touch it significantly, we have to seismically upgrade it. We have to put in all the new HVAC and stuff. It goes from uh, hopefully as close to little nothing to uh, five million to six million dollars like that. So we don't have that, so we've talked about trying to say, uh, keep it in and this package we showed about what's painted, maybe put an architectural screen, which is what we're showing here, that sort of ties it together and buys us some time for another decade or more uh, so we can raise funds uh, for phase two. Um, and so we're still keeping that. Per the scope, uh, we've looked at three combinations of uh, kitchens. So we have the kitchen here, which we'll show you with a, a proposed once we have the new kitchen, the full service kitchen uh, behind the uh, gym that connects to and kisses the uh, Manzanita Center. And then we have the existing Manzanita uh, kitchen too. And we looked at this, so now you can pick and choose. Do you want to do all three or everything else? Which ones of the three to do? And so we have, we have this information for you and uh, we're developing costs so we can make informed decisions. So probably should have started this with the senior center. So uh, the kitchen is the big driver, but we heard a wish list for lots of other uh, aspects of it. All 
these kitchens require a minimum by uh, health, county uh, and state health codes that are all mandated uh, to meet those, require 100 square foot pantries, so we'll be uh, moving the wall uh, and shrinking down the meeting room some to expand the kitchen and to get uh, with our kitchen consultant all the types of uh, equipment we need. Take the refrigerators out of the other room and bring them into the kitchen, uh, cook stoves, uh, dishwashers, storage, and, and the rest. Can I just ask a question about the kitchen? Uh, the Health and Wellness Center, uh, we met with this is a uh, CSD facility. We rent it to the tenant to get uh, income stream uh, from that. Uh, as we've heard Josh mention, uh, they also uh, bring in potential uh, funding as part of that. Uh, you can choose whether to build this now or not. Uh, uh, buy it, and we have the floor plans we've met with uh, their staff and uh, confirmed its use. Uh, it could be converted to anything else with another tenant in a different space. It has some higher, uh, slightly higher cost than the uh, health code. The early childhood uh, center uh, as well, with uh, expanding from the two portables to three classrooms, dedicated office space that gets uh, put in uh, there as well. And then last but not least, the Harriet Tubman House uh, gets uh, a, uh, basically uh, reconstructed the exterior plaster is actually in good shape. We have to take off the clay tile roof and seismically reinforce it. We have to seismically reinforce it on the interior, but it really turns uh, well into a uh, administrative center and an extra meeting room where the source of this place uh, can be there. Getting up the mountain is about 18 feet from the path. Uh, I uh, there, there to make it ADA accessible was a real challenge for our team. Uh, we have it with an exterior uh, wheelchair lift that takes you to a new platform right in front of the front door from the ADA spaces that are there, and the rest uh, can go up the, uh, the pathway uh, between it. So showing uh, the floor plans show what all that is. Uh, and just super uh, quickly, so between just this is what we want, the program, the, the vision, the quick illustration of the design, uh, to make this real uh, requires not just the architecture, but the civil engineering I mentioned, the landscape architects actually talking about the plants, the stereo talk about the, uh, the emergency response, so defensible landscape is part of our strategy, and we have to submit that to the county as well. So there are all these technical aspects that come in, the structural uh, determining, we get a lot more structural stuff later, determining how, which buildings are getting new uh, uh, HVAC, the uh, new ventilation, air conditioning, and plumbing. The color coding here shows that electrical. Also, uh, uh, be nice if we have the budget for audiovisual and security uh, infrastructure, the food service of the kitchen. And of course, uh, uh, Harriet Tubman House and the Manzanita Center are in the era of uh, building of hazardous materials, so those have to be abated as part of this. And we have any study uh, that show how much what that is and your factory that import cost models as we speak. So it's a little bit small and hard to see this, but I'll stand up and point to it. So uh, the pre-designed services was the master plan. We submitted that to the county. And uh, as we knew, it comes in and saying it's incomplete. We need some more work. Some of the things that are needing is, well, we need civil engineering. We need to address the stormwater. We need a vegetation plan. We need to do that. You have to engineer the street. And so all that was added into the schematic design work. So this feeds into it. And we knew that we needed to do the schematic design and the master plan and the PDP together get reviewed as one by the county. So we'll be submitting uh, uh, on your direction in the next uh, a month or so, uh, this to the county. The two of them together will go through the public review. And I think it was Laura who had asked, will this go through public reviews? It will, and it comes back to the CSD for you adopting the environmental document. And there had been discussions, not written up here, about uh, to expand the gym, you need a use permit. Uh, you can't do this without getting a use permit. So it was actually the PDP is also, you'll see, a slash, I think it says in the footnote, in the legend here, uh, it says SD, schematic design slash PDP, precise development slash UP, use, use per. So this whole thing, three separate types of uh, permissions, bells and whistles, we have to uh, go through. It's all normal procedures. This, we're collecting, we're now getting to about 90% of all the documentation we need. We're still getting additional requests from the county for possibly doing some additional traffic 
uh, studies all the way to uh, Ridgeway uh, out there. And so we'll have to, we have a really very thin traffic study uh, before we tried twice to see if the county would uh, say that it was adequate. And they pretty much said we're going to have to do a little bit more work. So these are the items we're going to uh, uh, fill in. And so that no matter what, we're going to go and uh, you've already paid for it unless you tell us to stop uh, in the master plan contract this SMAC is on to get these permits in place so that this project can has the entitlements, which is necessary for the funding to happen. And then, then you've got all that groundwork is locked in. The last master plan for 2014 and the early master plan never went through all those approvals and didn't get it, didn't have that framework in place. So that train is long ago left the station this is where we're well down the path that's going to keep on going for expectations that permits will probably as it shows here uh it will be near the end of the year that we get that going we do nothing else to say don't design anymore that train is still going to go or we're we'll working with you to get make sure we get that those things approved and i think uh just the next steps that come here so uh, we want this to move forward. We heard that you want the kitchen to go forward and all this. We're only 30%. You can't build anything from this yet. It's just a, a third of the way through the design. So we need to know how much it will cost. It will cost more than the $24 million. Uh, that I, I knew uh, when we met with the CAC. We're trying to figure out how much it is. We go back and forth with our cost estimators. We're going to be validating the costs uh, as we had in the master plan to say, well, I know I can do it a lot less. And I don't want to mislead you and say, okay, well, uh, uh, I was able to, Josh's dad is working like a wall in his house. It's, it's going to cost him so much. Why can't we cost that same way? We're going to do it, uh, apply to prevailing wages. We have to do it through a bonded licensed contractor. We're going to have local workforce uh, participation and job training opportunities. All of those things that needs management. Those things cost money and take time. Uh, so we're getting those numbers uh, to you and we're going to work very hard and try to figure out all the different scenarios that you wish to look at to deal with the funding if you can do 24 if there are other logical steps and remember it's not million by million there are natural logical breaks in this the gym and rec center has always been in the around a 15 million dollar uh, piece it's an expensive project the road work we have a million dollar grant but the road work and parking is probably two or three million each of these different chunks so figuring out what flows is we're going to do our best to come up with things that make sense that you can use but we're going to have to realize that there uh, I can't build only up to 10 feet of the gym and pull the roof later or I can't build two classrooms in it we have to come up with logical things that we can build uh, for reasonable prices we'll be meeting in the next weeks or two to see if we, can, we don't have inflated prices but there is a build, building boom going on uh, now escalation is high we didn't have all that site engineering before. I think uh, in my earlier work, the site costs uh, were in the budgets that we've been working with were lower than what it's actually going to cost. So I just want people to say this is really wonderful. We've got a lot of good news, but I want people to be thinking about to move forward. Uh, we, we will have to work together to choose what to phase and to trim uh, pieces. Just an inevitable piece. Raise more money is great. I always like that. You make it 30 million something that's good too, but within what we reasonably believe we can uh, uh, raise, we'll have to decide here. And so it suggests, is, yeah. is it safe to say that this amount of design work in the context of this full master plan is a necessary step? And the board may choose to put pieces of it on hold and move forward with only pieces or even introduce new things. Uh, this, the way the master plan is laid out, uh, Nothing gets torn down and build something else. And so there are, while there need to be logical packaging, there are a lot of flexibility and steps. Um, and, and really, you know, we, we're using this really, uh, you know, moving as fast as we were on this, largely because we had some users who lose it money. Um, and we successfully used that money in a way that's hopefully not wasteful, even if one or two buildings are put on hold, because we've got good work that we can use for quite some time. Um, the, so this document doesn't make the decisions on the next step. And what David's talking about with all this cost work, it's not just having the numbers, but then coming up with those bundles and then coming back to you with options. So that you, with community input and support, can make some next step 
uh, decisions. So this, this document alone doesn't do that. And that's what hopefully by our next meeting, we're going to be coming back with, uh, with the tools you need to start that discussion. Right. And will you, the uh, third bullet here says uh, CAC Community Advisory Committee meeting to be confirmed. Uh, do you want us to, with those bundles, to show them and get input from them before coming to you, come to you first, then to them, and back to you? These are uh, one of the items that I think you, uh, staff and the consultants would like to get uh, direction on. What I've heard pretty loud and clear in previous meetings was you want to use the Community Advisory Committee pretty heavily. I assume that that's not changed. So uh, uh, I'm operating under the assumption that we should indeed, uh, as we have information and kind of options, get them to weigh in and then bring something to you with their input. Seeing a few nods in the head. Fundraising help can come in many forms. 
Uh, yeah, but we don't need that. We need, I mean, we naturally need somebody who's going to bring in real money. Right. Excuse me. Yeah, you're right. That puts some hustle to them. So I'll, I'll bring back to you at, at your direction um, some options for consideration of how to move forward with reassembling the fundraising team. Um, and uh, maybe you can make a collective decision on, on what that looks like. <coughs> well, I would hope to move towards the goal this, this discussion and to get to your, your, your recommendation. And if you have any intended to be a fundraising team, fund we tend to spend the money for another <laughs> reason, uh, frankly. Uh, but we'll, we, can, uh, we have worked with. Uh, a lot of our clients have different types of fundraisers and we're, we're, we'll support uh, every, those products everywhere we can. So how soon can we expect to get the proposal? I'm hoping that next board meeting. Um, yeah. I think we can have a proposal irrespective of the timing of the actual letter. Uh, one of the next steps from the Buck Family Fund was, as I mentioned earlier, they're going to draft the letter, give us a chance to review it, um, give input to it. Uh, but, but we can have a strategy for moving forward, even if that letter's still in draft form. So I'll bring that to you now. And that would be at the next round of the next session. Yeah, I uh, heard earlier we're going to do a special meeting. Uh, we probably won't be ready by then. Uh, but uh, what I heard is next steps are, you know, recharge and focus on fundraising, including getting professional help, um, bring things to the Community Advisory Committee, uh, uh, get communication going in terms of newsletters. Um, you know, website. Yeah, you know, we have a website, we'll continue to update it. And, um, and through a combination of newsletters, websites, and probably, frankly, some community events and outreach, you know, a whole communication plan and strategy, so I'll bring that for you for approval. All these things will come back to you for approval. Um, and then uh, working on the five-year pro forma model, um, that one comes a little bit later after we agree on some scope, but I'll, I'll be placing groundwork with Monique and staff um, to, to start producing that. So I think we're, uh, frankly, where we wanted to be a year ago. Now uh, we've got our lead funder, a little further than we probably could have been a year ago in systematic design and back full steam on fundraising, back into programming, um, you know, and, and modeling and uh, you know, full board ahead. So we need to kind of reassemble the troops and uh, I'll, I'll bring those contracts and options for you to the next meeting. Okay, any other board comments? Yes. Again, so many of us in the community are looking at this and following this process and actually doing some research on our own. And when I take a look at this uh, design, it's very similar to designs we've been looking at in terms of my little buildings. And so, um, and I know one of the things the board is supposed to do is have three meetings. You, y'all haven't been following that. That's a lot. And so, um, I really would like you to take a look at getting, doing those three bids. Because all you have is the prices that um, um, David has come up with. You know, so let's look at it. Perhaps we can save a third of the funding and be able to do more things. But those are areas that we would really like you to move into as well. Actually, actually we're going to have to issue a request for proposals and bidders are going to submit this. Yeah, so what we'll be uh, <coughs> providing this will be made a public the cost estimate as well once we've got it uh, together is a estimate of probable cost assuming it gets bid publicly by a minimum of three uh, qualified contractors so that's the the basis and so they're looking our cost estimators are looking at all the other projects that are being bid uh, locally uh, public and private and getting a sense of what the materials costs are, what labor costs are, what are general contractors and subcontractors charging, and they have all these uh, details. The draft of the uh, plan, the cost model is 100 plus pages counted in every uh, transformer, uh, switch gear for the electrical, and every layer of the pipe as they are now, just a preliminary pieces. So uh, we 
we believe me, we want to try to get the lowest cost approach, and we had the master plan. Uh, we got a team together of contractors, people who built that school in Richmond, to see are there other ways we can do this to save money. And we're going to ask that question again to say, how can we get the biggest bang for our buck? And because there's, this is not about making a Taj Mahal, it's about getting a, a good building that will last you and serve for generations, that you'll be proud of, that will reflect the community, that will be functional, be sustainable uh, for it. Uh, but that delivers a lot. I just don't want you all to overlook that, that that could be a very real possibility. They're making all kinds. They make, uh, they're building hospitals, they're building college, they're building these institutes. This may be. And I just want you all as a board to say to someone, please look into this as well. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing is, is that when I take a look at this plan, I'm not course, and I've said it several times, the building for the clinic is humongous. And we have a fight for community programs. I just have an issue with that. And the other thing on the back of the page, the very back of this, I want you all to turn to it, it clearly states, you want the tax credit, you want the tax credit. These stars at the top, we have to, this has to be put to rest real soon. And you all are building it in as though this is what you're going to do. I would just like to say that I did talk uh, with Josh about the new market tax credits and what I understand where we're at is that uh, the attorney, Don Lancaster, needs to look at a more complete, actual complete, a real um, proposal to actually weigh in. There's, there hasn't been anything substantial given this, is that correct? And, and, that, and, that, and that actually I think part of the confusion is in the first master plan it says that new market tax credits were required to actually, uh, were, were, were required and recommended because of the construction management at risk, which is different than the design bid. So if, uh, that, I just, uh, and I just want to ask a question. I see in here in the yellow, the CEQA, at the end it says public review. Um, and at the bottom it has a kind of review process that's going to start now. Well, no, that started, but the submittal of the precise development plan so when do we, and that's a review, is that when we, do now do we look at getting involved in doing a review, or will it be when the CEQA is completed in October and December? Do you know when, at what point we actually do start to have the county involved in a review process? I believe the public review processes get scheduled in the fall. Okay. Okay, Pam, do you have a question? Or um, I do, thank you. I have two questions. Um, one about the kitchens. And um, so that they'll all be commercial, correct? Correct. So that the community can use them for their own businesses to generate money for themselves. That's a CSD operation. Yeah, but, the, but you can only do that if it's a commercial kitchen. <coughs> Good, I'm glad to hear that. Um, secondly, I would like, I hear the words in describing the, uh, you know, the, the buildings. I hear words like functional and sustainable. I like that. I would also like to hear beautiful. I would like to hear beautiful because there used to be where the uh, where the boxing ring is now. There used to be a really nice room that opened up out to all that green with a fireplace. It was a really lovely place to uh, meet as a community. And there is no space like that that I know of now that's large enough to uh, host really community gatherings like that, you know, with a fireplace. Fire is important, you know, it warms everybody. So that's something I'd like to see included, beautiful. And thirdly, how much does it cost to build a pool and bathrooms, just ballpark for you? I can't remember now it's a, is it six million? Yeah, about six million. Six million. About six million, okay. So I had an idea with the, um, with the bathrooms that might be built with the uh, gym. Those bathrooms could be built um, so that they serve the pool also. There could be an entrance from the pool area outside and also an, uh, an interior entrance from the um, from the gym area, and there could be showers in there. 
and then there wouldn't need to be two sets of bathrooms and that could cut costs. Yeah, the, well, the pool with the gym would require restrooms approximately double the size of the ones we're providing. So each of them have their own uh, needs to it. So we're not, if we were building it all at once, that would be the case in phasing it. Uh, we, we're juggling these different scenarios. It, to, I think the, the building two sets of them will uh, still work out uh, very well without uh, changing the costs overall. And I really want to, um, I, I want to step up, even though I don't live in this community, I also know and understand how important a pool is. A pool is essential for everybody's well-being. You heal in water, water heals you, and there needs to be a pool. And I would say, if the people voted, and it's number one, let's move that along and give the people what the community wants. And you know, when you said that, the thought came to me from the meeting today as it relates to health. So health in the eyes of the beholder, you know, instead of just talking about the health clinic, health could be a swimming pool. But it's both. I mean, it definitely, I think our recreation elements as well as our mental and medical health are all under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm just saying, you know. It could be any. any right. So I hear you. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you to all of you for this work that you're doing. This is big and it's important. Let's do it in a good way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I put in your report? Yes. I, I, can I just second what, what Pat said about the beautiful? And I feel like you and I, but I do think that you're listening. They, you, you responded. Uh, I think in terms of your growth in this process, it's been amazing to see you really respond and listen and, and hold these ideas in. You have, and I appreciate that. I really do. And, and also, Josh, I want to thank you for the work you've done on the fundraising. That we can move on to this next level of really getting someone who is a fundraiser and making, making that commitment that they don't get paid until they actually get some funds in. I think Laura stole my thunder on the last note I wanted to have on this overall report, which is I want to remind us we've hit some major milestones. We've raised a lot of money. We've done a lot of work on planning. There's some tough discussions and decisions ahead. Those are high-cost problems. <laughs> and so we're, we're entering a, a good state for this project. I think we need to be careful about how we conduct those discussions to not scare everybody away. Um, because we're making good progress, and I, I'm confident collectively we'll make good decisions. Well, I, I'm encouraged now, uh, after really looking at the swimming pool in a new light, and since it was number one and number two, why not? If it's only $6 million, that could be in phase one. That's, so I mean, that, that became a reality in terms of the health. I know what they may have been thinking, but is health, or real health. Okay, so thank you for your report. Okay. Um, Christmas Day again. John, when you say it scares people off, how do, how do people get scared off when you're uh, Many ways. Uh, anytime that we uh, show that the community is not united behind the project, um, funders get nervous about, is this ready for funding? Um, so they, they like to see a high level of community support uh, and dialogue that reflects that. So it's important to celebrate our progress and have the tough discussions, but in as civil and collaborative a way as possible. So funders look at it as, this isn't a community fighting each other, this is a community figuring out a way through. Um, uh, so communication is a two-way street. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, also, I think uh, anytime there's misinformation out there, that's very damaging to a project. Yes. Um, so <coughs> we need to make sure that we get through our newsletters and community outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got a reporter in the room through whatever <laughs> makes the press that, that. that we have uh, uh, you know, accurate and clear information. Uh, so there's a lot of ways when we go on and on about that, but I, I just think uh, we're making big progress and we want to make sure we don't, we, we make more steps forward than steps backwards.
Okay, so thank you uh, both for your report. Congratulations to the entire community on uh, 